Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis Trading Plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. Before we pull up our video, we always want to start off our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be referred as a trading recommendation. No matter what foreign investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can't lose all of your money. Any strategy we show today are for informational purposes only, future results not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility, trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our forex technical analysis trading plan for the pound dollar, the euro dollar, and the dollar franc. In each video, we look at the prior session's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll review the gold chart to come up with leading sentiment. We'll try to create a low volatility and inside bar watch list, and we have an education spotlight at the end. Please send your feedback and comments to contact at dmbfx.com, and let's head to the charts. As we look at this week in Forex and what to expect, we can see that we finally had the Greek debt swap approval. They got their money. And now on Friday, Greece has formally asked private investors to agree to this debt swap. Now remember, this debt swap means that they're going to take a 75% loss. The key here is 75% participation. If they get above 90 to 95% participation, everything is going to be fine. And it's going to be considered voluntary. If they get 75% to 95%, then some of the uh, swaps are going to come into play and it's going to be considered involuntary. Uh, if they get below 75% participation, then the whole swap is off. So 75% is the key and you know, if they don't get that type of participation, more financial turmoil is going to hit the Eurozone. Speaking of your zone, uh, the short squeeze continues on. Um, uh, there was a large short position. I think at one point in time it was over 170k. Uh, you know, internationally, uh, it was reduced down uh, from 145 to 140k this week. Um, uh, so, that, and also don't forget that we have a weak dollar, which we're going to talk about certainly, uh, shortly. And then uh, we continue to see the yen at key resistance price levels. This week, we'll also see uh, the official G20 official meeting in Mexico trying to get more commitment for money for the IMF. And we're also going to see reports on the portfolio rebalancing um, uh, as uh, the month of March begins. Let's go ahead and pull the charts and talk about that do weak dollar. We are starting off by looking at the dollar here. And of course, we had the great end of the year for the dollar, but 2012 has not been good for the dollar. And one thing that's important to look at as we zoom in a little bit is that you can see we're starting to break this 79 support level. Um, even though we dipped down below it, we're starting to break that also. And so you're going to have to start watching this 78 price level. You can see back here in December, we, we bounced here a little bit. And if we don't stop there, then we, you know it looks like we're heading all the way down to 200 moving average. So the dollar is definitely looking weak. So a weak dollar, what does that mean for gold? You betcha it has taken off there retesting its 1800 uh, past resistance price level really this week was a good week for gold um, broke above the resistance here and the resistance from about two weeks ago and now we have to start looking at it to go up there and test 1800 and look at it on a market profile um, long as we hold above here we should stay uh, and a lot of volume here at 1750 you can see these pockets so as, as long as we stay above here, we won't go back down to 1750. If we break 1715, we go down to 1725. Almost $25 increments there. But gold definitely strong off that weak dollar. And then, you know, a lot of what's going on with the RAN and, and um, the Bering Strait over there, um, we can see that uh, oil has also taken off to a new high here. We talk so often about the 96 to 92, 102, uh, price level uh, right in here. Sorry, it took so long to load there, but you can see it has taken off. It has really taken off. So let me pull back here, and, and certainly our, our prices at the gas uh, pump have, have proven that out to be. So you can see a little bit here. Well, we got 119, uh, 114 to watch um, as, as a, a potential next area. Uh, whether or not we'll find something in between. Uh, 
we'll have to see. I think I had the wrong tool. Yes, this is what I'm looking for. There we go. Um, and you can see how we kind of just fell right in there. Uh, so there may not have been a lot of volume accumulating in this price range. And what I'm trying to do is just examine is there somewhere in here. Right now we're at 109. You know, is there somewhere for us to stop in between here? And I, I don't think so. So it looks like 114 really is an area for us to watch from here. Uh, and are definitely not great for our pocketbooks. We are looking at the euro dollar on a daily chart. And one thing that's interesting about this, and this is the, the geeky nerd in me, is I love to see when our, our lines come into play. And this is why I draw them. And you can see here that we've had this line drawn in. And Friday's action took us right to it in the pullback. This is where the sellers found value and trying to push it back. Now, uh, we'll come over and see our next area after that is 1.36423 is our next area if we break through this resistance at 1.3476. But um, again, so that's really interesting. We'll also zoom out here to the monthly and see, uh, see it better this way. Here we are at 1.34768, looking at 1.364, and we still have this downtrend line. So technically, we're still in a downtrend. Um, uh, but you can see sort of a, a head and shoulders pattern starting to play out here on the monthly chart. Look at this up. There's a shoulder. There's a head. There's a shoulder. And so um, the question is if we were going to break this neckline here at 1.266 or even the 200 moving average if you look at this you know, dip right here. Um, so we sort of have a head and shoulders pattern watch up. So uh, you, know, you, you still have to be a little bit bearish, but um, I definitely want to watch this downtrend line right here. On the uh, hourly, we're obviously in a sell zone well above our... Uh, long-term moving average and we can see once we got above uh, 1.328 is when we really started to make a move we even tested it right here so on our hourly that's kind of where we were we're at but obviously we're in a uh, sell zone above a long-term moving average you can see the euro taking control and you can see the snaking going on here and that's why we got the sideways price action because we're snaking and then finally we got a little divergence right here and that was the beginning of the move up and then we got a little more divergence right about here and that's when we got our final move up and now as they begin to converge towards each other once again we have consolidation with a little pullback um, the euro is trending up nice little spike at the close the dollar is trending up also so it's still a little strong um, as it tends uh, spiked up in the close but we know that the dollar by itself um, has been uh, going down. Um, so the key here is we're at another resistance point. Uh, we talked about the euro short squeeze that's in. So we'll see what happens from here. Um, on the do pound dollar, we can see the same thing. 200 moving average resistance of 1.587 really holding in. And actually, we'll take a quick moment and see what you really see happening here if we go back to the euro dollar, is the euro dollar was weaker than the pound dollar, and the euro dollar made this move. You could kind of say it's finally caught up to where the pound dollar has already, been, you know, it made the big move initially, and now it's going sideways. And we don't really see, we see sort of an inverted head and shoulder pattern. So you could say there's a W pattern going on here. Um, definitely some support here in the 1.565. Price level, we now have a double bottom here, triple bottom if you want to include these wicks. Um, but we have the strong resistance here at 1.587. We can see that we're obviously in a sell zone on the uh, one hour time frame above our long term moving average. Got a real good spike here, divergence here on the pound dollar. That's where we got our big move up. Now they're starting to um, converge a little bit. But because we have a lot of switching of control here, that's why we don't see as much consolidation. Uh, in this one, as we did in the euro dollar, not a lot of snaking. We see a lot of uh, convergence and switching of control, and right now the uh, the pound has it. A lot of sideways action with a big spike up here for the pound, a slight trend up for the dollar, spike up here into the close. We're going to finish off with the dollar franc, and you can see uh, we were talking about this support here at 0.911 for a while. 
and it tested and tested and then this week we finally broke it as I scroll over you can see our next level we're looking at is 0 0.891 ultimately we're looking all the way down at 0 0.85763 but right now we're looking at 0 0.891 on the daily chart so we'll zoom back over here we'll also go out to the monthly just to get another look at it and you can see there's that 0.891 that we're watching um, so uh, and there's a 0.857 uh, obviously, we're still in a downtrend, even as good as the what the dollar has done recently. But we're certainly getting a pullback here. Um, so, and what's interesting is if I pull out my crosshairs, and you can see this uh, wick right here from March first, two thousand eight. It's pretty much exactly where we died. On uh, what is this? January first. That's pretty much where we died and where we pulled back from currently. Now, on the one-hour time frame, we are below on long-term moving average and we are in a buy zone. The franc has been in control for a while with a little convergence here, so we'll see who takes control here as we open up here on Sunday. Uh, the franc has been trending up, nice spike in the close. Dollars trending up, nice spike in the close. So we'll see if this 0.891 uh, support will hold up. Uh, and ultimately, 109.857 will hold up as we uh, look at what the market is going to react to with all three at key price levels. Resistance levels for the pound dollar and the euro dollar, support price levels for the dollar franc. As we come to today's watch list, first we have our low volatility watch list, which is our one hour time frame using Bollinger Bands, trying to find consolidation trying to find uh, a period where there's low volatility, trying to find that breakout. Same thing with our inside bar watch list is watching the range of one day compared to the previous day. Again, looking for that breather, that consolidation, and find that breakout in the direction of the trend. But remember, Friday, we had a lot of big action on Friday. And so big action means no consolidation, means no small ranges. So we have no candidates for either the low volatility watch list or the inside bar watch list. As we come to Rising Case Spotlight, we've been kind of surmising what we've been talking about for the past, I don't know, four months or so. Last week, we talked about the questions every trader has to answer in order to define who they're going to be as a trader. And today, we're surmising what we've been talking about trading rules. And basically, it's your criteria for getting into a trade. If A, then B. If A, B, C, then D. You know, what has to happen before you push the button and enter a trade? And the thing that's important is that not only do you need to know how to get into a trade, but you need to need how to get out. And this is where a lot of traders make a mistake because they get tips from rooms, from TV, from newsletters talking about get into a trade here, but they don't know what to do when they get out. And the best example I can have is when I first started trading, I got an advice about getting into a trade. And I got in and I was up pretty nice. I was up almost double. Uh, but the person who told me to get into a trade said, oh, this is, this is going to be nuclear. You know, this is going to be epic. Uh, and so I didn't get out and then I'm still in that trade today because it's just sitting there at a break even um, and so you know I, I, I had a chance to get out of double and, and, and didn't because my psychology was wrong um, and so my point is because I didn't know how to get out of the trade and I was just listening to what somebody said I remember this is when I first got started trading um, I missed out on that opportunity to double up and so uh, uh, this is another time where we say you have to be financially literate. You have to know how to make your own decisions. You can't just follow somebody else. And again, I wasn't able to profit, and I didn't have any drawdown rules. And so now I'm still in this trade today, just, just sitting there uh, in my portfolio. As always, take the time to like, subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date to our new uh, features. You know about our resources where we best want to help you is through our mentorship and where we can help you one-on-one -on -one develop that trader's mindset where you can make your own decisions so that you can make educated decisions when either looking for yourself or getting advice from other people. And of course, if you want to put our expertise to work, our managed forex accounts are perfect, leading brokers, full transparency, all the regulations. It's not you sending money away. It is your account uh, and where it will work with an, and develop an individualized trading plan that will enact on your behalf. In the end, it's all about being able to pull the trigger in a smart way.
and we'll help you develop that trader's mindset to become an, a low-risk, high-probability trader. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.